touchdown. Oh, what a right uppercut. And another one. And a right. Lennox Lewis is widely considered as one of the best heavyweights of all time. In this video, we take a look back at the illustrious career of Lennox Lewis. After winning Olympic gold in 1988, Lennox turned professional and quickly started destroying journeymen. Greg Gorl's body was brutally attacked before Lewis started to use him as a punch bag. And got a merciful stoppage. And now he's in trouble, and there he goes. Swings to the ring to take a look. That's it, that is it. He won't have to look at it. I felt good, I was really keyed up for it. Noel Quarles was pummeled to the canvas. Yeah, the right's getting through, and he's down, and he won't get up from that. Calvin Jones was knocked down by a right hand and then clubbed to the canvas. Jones desperately trying to cover up. He's pitched forward and this could be it. Jorge Dascolo was knocked down within seconds. The reason they took this guy was to try to get some rounds out of him. Oof. I don't know if they're going to get him here. And then finished with some hard right hands. Again, he is now in big trouble. Oh, rabbit punches to the back of the head. More of this stuff. No, I don't think so. He backs him into a corner. And Dan Murphy. Next up for Lewis was journeyman Mike Acey. Lewis dropped Acey early. That was but he was extremely fortunate not to be disqualified for blatant punches while Acey was down. Oh, that could be a disqualification on Lewis's part. He hit Acey when he was down, hit him three times, and that could be either a point taken away or a disqualification. And there's the punch there on the replay. And people are throwing beer cans in the ring, and that's that's not like Canadian uh, boxing fans. AC decided to fight on and got stopped with a body shot. Just, uh, his opponent Absolutely. with that jab. But what, the Scotty, what they want to see Lennox do is fight, fight against uh, all the top opposition. You gotta give the kid time to develop. The, this fight is over. It was a right to the body and then another left to the solar plexus. And I can't believe that Mike AC is. Jean Chanet was next up to receive the punishment. Too far, all over. It's got to be, it has to be. The eye pouring blood. He was punched around the ring by Lennox until the doctor stopped the fight on a cut. That's got to be it. Doctor says no. That's it. It's all over. 35 and 0 British champ Gary Mason was second best but showed tremendous heart. He's putting everything into a do or die effort. Before being stopped by referee Larry O'Connell. O'Connell will play a huge role in Lewis's career in one of the most infamous moments in boxing history. More on that later. Not gonna take any more, son. And that's right enough. Lewis came out looking very serious in his next fight and banged Mike Weaver into the canvas with a brutal right hand. about you meeting uh, maybe a, a, a Vander Holyfield or Mike Tyson? I say within about 12, 15 months. You know, as long as I keep practicing, keep on learning, keep on fighting. Glenn McCrory would often talk about the physical strength of Lewis when he was commentating on later fights. Right away, and he's certainly doing that. Now, he didn't do this against Mike Weaver last time up. Oh, he bangs around the ribs. He was beaten in the Cruiserweight Championship, remember, Glenn McCrory. Lewis KO'd him with a chopping right hand. Or left, right. And it was a glancing right hand that hit him right on the chin. That ended it all. Olympic gold medalist Tyrell Biggs was next up to get flattened by a right hand. Six feet five inches tall and down goes Biggs. And there's another right hand. Lewis throws another one. Levi Billups was a durable journeyman who was able to go the distance and give Lewis 10 good rounds. Seconds, one last flurry, and there's the bell. Oh. Well, Levi Billups came here and said he would test Lennox Lewis' part. I don't know if he did that. Commonwealth champion Derek Williams was knocked out by one of Lewis's most brutal punches, the right uppercut. 
just missing its target. Oh, what a right uppercut. And another one. And a right. And down Williams goes. That was impressive. Is he going to get up from that? Seven, eight, nine. It's close. It's stopped. It's over. I've set all my goals that I wanted to set in Britain. And now I'm going for the world championship. After a routine win over Mike Dixon. Uh, he's going to get hurt. That's all. Dixon does not go down, but that is it. Woody Battle has waved it off. Lewis was ready for his biggest test to date. A chance to become the mandatory challenger. I think uh, Razor Roddick should prevail with that left hook he has. Uh, Lennox hasn't fought anyone in the top ten, and uh, Washington tonight hasn't shown me anything. Um, he's out of his lead. He's not ready for a fight with Razor Roddick. Razor Roddick will knock his head off. Yeah, you're right. I, I, that's the way I feel about it, too. Lewis produced a devastating performance, dropping Ruddock twice. Right hand by Lewis. Ruddock goes down. He's got a right hand to worry about, too. Lewis hurting Ruddock with the left hook. Ruddock in serious trouble as Lewis pounds into the canvas. And knocking him out cold. We have a great new heavyweight. Lewis was now number one contender for Riddick Bowe's WBC belt. But when Bowe threw his belt into the trash to avoid Lewis, Lewis became WBC champ. Especially here, and that includes celebrities Tom Cruise and Nicole Kidman. Lewis's first defense was a comfortable win over Tony Tucker. All over Tucker, and Tucker goes down! Next up was a grudge match with Frank Bruno. Bruno's jab gave Lewis some serious problems, and he seemed to hurt Lewis in the third round. I thought Bruno was winning the fight. He hurt Lewis again in the seventh round. Having a respect. Lewis in trouble in the corner. But got caught with a huge counter left hand. What a comeback by Lewis. And stopped against the ropes. It's amazing that Bruno stands up and now Mickey Van stops the fight. After a routine win over Phil Jackson. Right hand by Lewis after a couple of uppercuts. Lewis was set to face the iron-chinned Oliver McCall. McCall is known today for having the best chin in heavyweight history. In the second round, both fighters threw right hands and McCall's right hand landed first. Lewis having caught a short left hand inside. Six, eight, seven, eight, nine. What is this? I thought it was an early stoppage, but Lewis was probably going to get knocked out badly because his legs had gone. And we're gonna have a riot here. The comeback fight for Lennox was against Lionel Butler. Lewis's old trainer, Pepe, was training Butler. Lewis won every round and got the knockout in round five. And that right hand might be enough to finish it. Lewis headlined a fight card in Dublin, Ireland in his next fight. Easily dispatching the overmatched Justin Fortune. Lewis's next fight on his comeback trail was against Tommy Morrison. Lewis was building himself back up for a title shot. Morrison was outclassed and stopped in the sixth round. Lane's getting very close to a stoppage here. You get that sense. Down goes Morrison again. A terrific performance by Lennox Lewis. Ray Mercer was the next opponent for Lewis and he gave Lewis one of the toughest fights of his career. The action was fierce. Both guys had their moments. He holds on to Lewis, and now Lewis is hurt by the right hand. Lennox not holding up. At the end of the fight, nobody knew who was going to get the decision. I got it, five rounds to five, 95-95, I got it a draw. But Lewis got a majority decision and moved on to a title shot against his old rival, Oliver McCall. In one of the most bizarre moments in boxing history, McCall appeared to have a breakdown during the fight and started behaving very erratically. The people in his corner are looking at him and wondering what's going on. McCall refused to fight or defend himself and started crying in the ring. He's crying in his corner. I've never seen anything like this. Referee Mills Lane had no alternative but to stop the fight and award Lewis the victory. In his first defense of his title, Lewis got a disqualification victory 
over Henry Akinwande, who just wouldn't stop holding. Time. Four months later, Atlantic City yeah. Convention That's Center. Galata. It's the end of the fight. We've had another disqualification. Yeah. Andrew Galata was known as a wild fighter who was no stranger to throwing low blows. He had been disqualified twice for throwing them against Riddick Bowe the previous year. Lewis put on a devastating performance. The straight right hand couldn't miss and Galata was dispatched in the first round. Only the second time in his career that Andrew Galata has been down and he is extremely wobbly as he gets up. A lot of time but he has absolutely nothing as the Lewis pounds him to the canvas again. Shannon Briggs stunned Lewis in the first round. Outed against Lewis since Ray Mercer in 96. He attacked. And Lewis is wobbly as Briggs chases him across the ring. But Lewis got on top and landed his chopping right hand. Now when you have an opponent like Briggs, it's and that will be it. Four. Shannon thought he had it all his own way. Shady had an insanely good chin, but he took some serious pain. And now Lewis cuts loose with a right cross. And still, the stage was now set for the biggest fight in the heavyweight division since Mike Tyson had been undisputed champion in 1987. Evander Holyfield was the IBF and WBA champion and Lewis was the WBC champion. The winner of this fight would be the undisputed heavyweight champion of the world. Holyfield had predicted a third round knockout and he gave his all in round three. But he didn't get the knockout. So much for the round three knockout. Lewis was allowed to fight with a pretty high body protector in the fight. Lewis dominated the fight and won most of the rounds. But in one of the worst decisions in boxing history, the judges scored it a draw. Even a draw, the decision is even a draw. That's a travesty. That is, ladies and gentlemen, a travesty, an outrage, a highway robbery. Lennox Lewis has just been robbed. It was the London judge, Larry O'Connell, who had refereed many of Lewis's earlier fights, who gave the deciding draw scorecard. The rematch was a much closer fight. Both fighters had their moments. Hard right hand by Holyfield. Holyfield performed much better than he did in the first fight. But Lewis also raised his game and did enough to win a unanimous decision. I had Lewis winning the fight. And become the first British undisputed heavyweight champion of the world since Bob Fitzsimmons in 1897. Lennox Lewis! In Lewis's first defense of his undisputed title, he fought against unbeaten 31 0 Michael Grant. Grant was the best young American boxing prospect and promised to come at Lewis and have an absolute war. Grant came out very fast early and landed a big right hand, but Lewis took control of the fight and hurt Grant badly. Grant barely made it out of the round. Lewis has still got to be That should do it. That's it. That should do it. That's it. He's broke his leg. In the second round, Grant landed a big shot in an exchange, but Lewis landed a brutal uppercut which knocked Grant out. He lands another uppercut. Grant would need surgery on his knee because he tore ligaments when he was knocked down. Next up for Lewis was a dangerous fight against big left hooker David Tua. The man known as the Tua man found it impossible to land his patented big left hook throughout the fight. Tua was soundly outboxed in a pretty boring fight. Combination and Tua smiles. You know why? Because he was hurt. You know, you got to come with more than a power left hook to beat Lennox Lewis. That's why I said, if you come into war, you got to bring your whole arsenal, just not, not just a left hook and a haircut. Lewis would then defend his titles in South Africa against heavyweight contender Hasim Rachman. In one of the biggest upsets in boxing history, Rackman knocked Lewis out in the fifth round with a huge right hand. September 24, 
Good shot, I come with a good shot. I was coming in throwing a punch at the same time, and you know, he just connected with his, his punch. In the rematch, Lewis was a man on a mission. He was extremely sharp and outboxed Rackman early. Rackman's corner had the insane strategy of just extending his arms to stop Lewis from landing his right hand. And keep, every time he come at you, do like this, put them hands up, that kills everything. Just keep doing that, you can't get over your arms. Every time you make any kind of retreat, I mean, run to you, put your hands up high. That stops everything. The strategy didn't work. Rackman got brutally knocked out while his arms were extended, and Lewis was number one at heavyweight again. Half the table's been turned. Is it reversed? It's over. Lennox Lewis got revenge. The stage was now set for Lewis and Mike Tyson to finally meet from the early stages of the fight. Lewis used holding and spoiling to slow Tyson down. Tyson had a good first round. But at the age of 35, Tyson was a shell of his former self. Lewis took over the fight. And after some forceful corner work by Manny Stewart, Lewis got the knockout in the eighth round. Next up for Lewis, was a fight against Vitaly Klitschko, who was a late replacement after Kirk Johnson had pulled out. Bring him a little low. Lewis was not in shape, coming in at his heaviest ever for the fight. Hard right hand by Klitschko. Klitschko was awkward and landed some good punches early. And with the right hand, Lewis momentarily wobbled. And Manny Stewart told Lewis to keep the pressure on. You've got to take it to him now, okay? You got to experience in these big fights. And it started to pay off. It left out. Oh, what an uppercut. Lewis got the victory with a stoppage on cuts and decided to call it a career. These days, Lewis lives in Miami Beach with his wife Violet, a former Miss Jamaica runner up, and their three children. Lewis is regularly seen doing commentary and punditry on boxing telecasts.